Hello English students, you're watching Excel at English, which is a channel devoted to giving you insightful analysis of texts for your GCSE and A-level study. This is the third lesson in a series of video lessons on the drama text Blood Brothers for AQA English Literature. And in this lesson, we will be looking at analysing structure and giving you a framework which will allow you to talk meaningfully about the structure of the play. Now you may already know from your study of Shakespeare that Aristotle was the first to analyse the structure of drama uh, during the uh, Greek ages and he analysed particularly the structure of tragedies and tragic convention. His ideas were taken by a guy called Gustav Freytag who was a German um, theorist who was working around the Victorian times and he took Aristotle's idea and put them into a model of dramatic structure which is called Freytag's pyramid. And so here is a simple model of Freytag's Pyramid. Freytag's Pyramid has got five basic stages and it has an introduction after which action is rising towards a climax and then falling again towards a catastrophe. Now in writing Blood Brothers, Russell used this classic uh, tragic dramatic structure. Um, it might be useful to think about this as a building and releasing of dramatic tension um, and as things uh, reach the climax we have a building up of dramatic tension and then in the second half as we return towards the catastrophe there is a release of dramatic tension it's a very useful concept for explaining the way that blood brothers works here is a slightly more complex version of freytag's pyramid and i'm going to use in this video this model to actually apply the structure of blood brothers to the model of tragic structure if you intend to follow along by making notes, it would be a good idea to pause the video at this point and to sketch out on a reasonably sized piece of paper this model of tragic structure. That way you can keep notes as I go through some of those key events. You'll also see that there's some, la there's some language and some terms on there that may be unfamiliar to you. As I go through, I'm going to give uh, some of those key structural terms and definitions of them. So firstly, we get the narrator's opening introduction in the form of a prologue, which is a kind of speech given before the play. This addresses the audience and challenges them to consider the events of the play. We also get a reveal of the final scene, which is an example of a prolepsis. This is a flash forward. And that's a really key device in establishing dramatic tension in the play in that it gives the audience uh, a, an idea of what's going to happen, but it doesn't tell them how it's going to happen. And so we're tuned into watching the events unfold because we know where they're leading. Secondly, then, we get what we might call an exposition. And the exposition is Mrs. Johnson's backstory explaining her status and position. We get this through the song Marilyn Monroe and her dealings with the milkman. We can already begin to evaluate her character and probably feel some sympathy for the situation that she finds herself in. The exposition stage in the structure of a, of a dramatic work is the establishing stage, the stage where the key details are laid down. So say, for example, if you were studying uh, Romeo and Juliet, the exposition stage establishes the feud between the two families. If you were studying Macbeth, the exposition would be the background of Macbeth's glories in battle. The exposition, crucially, is the part of the structure that is that is immediately before the main conflict is introduced. And the conflict is introduced in what we can call an inciting incident. Now this happens in Blood Brothers where Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Lyons meet and they seal the pact over the Bible. This is the inciting incident that begins the conflict. And the underlying uh, conflict of the, the women's guilt and of the boy's life growing up living a lie begins at this point. And Russell really foregrounds this event as, uh, as the inciting incident, as the beginning of the conflict, through the narrator's presence and his words where he describes a pact being sealed, a deal being born. 
we in the audience understand that this is the beginning of something dark and this is a key event that's going to lead to the tragic scene that we were shown at the very beginning. Next we have what we can call rising action. Now in rising action the conflict is still there, it's still developing, but events unfold often positively for the characters and this is crucial because it enables the audience to form connections with those characters. We are introduced to Mickey and Eddie, their characters, their relationships are established and explored and we begin to form an attachment to these two really quite likeable kids. The effects of this inciting conflict, um, i.e. the fact that their lives are a lie, are still there, they're still beneath the surface, they're still developing as we see the impact of uh, the separation on the two boys separate lives. We also get that conflict presented through the guilt that Mrs Johnson and Mrs Lyons experience in this rising action. The rising action then leads to a turning point which can also be called a reversal or a peripateia. Now the peripateia is the point at which the rising action turns into a more negative direction. And this turning point is placed very effectively by Russell in the time of Mickey's wedding. The rising action has seen events unfold positively for Mickey. His relationship with Eddie is good. He eventually gets to marry Linda and she is pregnant. So this is a time of expectation and they get married. And really this is where I guess Mickey's life peaks in terms of its positivity. During the song Take a Letter Miss Jones, the wedding is juxtaposed with his unemployment and we're shown very much that this is a changing point in his life. From this point forward, Mickey's character and his relationships will all follow a negative direction. Following the peripatea, we get the falling action in which events play out negatively for the key characters. Particularly for Mickey, the inequality and his class status is going to really destroy his life in a sequence of rapid events. We have his bitterness at being unemployed, which destroys his relationship with Eddie. This leads him to take part in the robbery with Sammy, which leads to a murder. He is imprisoned somewhat unjustly, leading to his addiction, which leads to the collapse of his marriage, leading to Linda calling Eddie and to their affair. These events lead us all the way in the play through to the catastrophe in which the conflict is finally resolved. This is the climactic event that completes the action of the play and as you know Mickey uh, approaches Eddie with the gun and shoots Eddie and is himself shot. At this point the play has reached a kind of a circular ending in that the promises of the narrator in the very beginning have been fulfilled and we realise that we've achieved a kind of a completeness. And the narrator makes that clear to us in his final section, which we can call a denouement. And the denouement is the section of a dramatic work in which the action is tied up and reflected upon. So this is, I guess, the part of the action that follows a catastrophe. And we get the denouement in Blood Brothers through an epilogue from the narrator. It's his short closing speech before the finale song that completes the story and that I guess um, asks the audience to give their final reflection on how the events occurred. And so you see there how a slightly more developed model of Freytag's pyramid can be used to show how the dramatic action develops in Blood Brothers, right through from the prologue, through the rising action, to a reversal, a catastrophe, and finally a denouement through the epilogue that sums the action up. Your next task would be, uh, that you'd be wise to take part in, would be to test yourself by trying to reorganize these parts of the dramatic structure into the correct order and as best you can to actually add a key example from Blood Brothers, um, an event from the play that might fit the description of the key structural term. Another important structural method that Russell uses is his use of parallel scenes to present changes in his characters. 
Scenes are parallel where there are two different scenes or events at different points in the play that seem to have a direct and meaningful connection. Particularly, Russell is using these direct connections to draw our attention to changes in character or developments in theme. And he often foregrounds the fact that he's using parallel scenes, making it more obvious through his use of musical or language devices. A good example of that is the kids game in which the language and the lyrics of the kids game song is repeated during the shooting scene in which um, Sammy shoots a man dead during the robbery. By drawing attention to those two as parallel scenes, Russell might be making a point about how childhood innocence can turn to tragedy in adulthood. Have a look at the selected parallel scenes presented and ask yourself or make notes about how the changes, developments or even similarities present the lives of the characters involved. Well, to summarise, we've looked at how Freytag's Pyramid is a model for dramatic structure, uh, particularly for tragedies. We've also looked at how that model of tragic structure can be applied to Blood Brothers in a way that shows how the play builds and releases tension. We've covered a number of key structural terms which you can use effectively in essay writing to explain the way that drama unfolds in this play or actually any other play that you might be studying. We've also looked at the idea of parallel scenes and the way that they can be used importantly to present character change. Thanks for your focus and attention. Thanks for checking out the video Excel English. If you're interested in more videos of this quality, then have a look at the playlists on the uh, channel website, on the channel page. Um, you could also uh, throw a like on it if you've enjoyed it, if you found it worthwhile. Drop me a message in the comments asking for anything that you'd like to focus on. And of course, subscribe because there will be new content posted up. Good luck with your studies.